Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live recording. It's going to be so much fun. I was just getting everything all set up here. I have a very specific way that my computer screen lays out when I'm doing this. <laughs> so I'm trying to get that all put together. I've been listening to um, my previous audiobooks. <laughs> so I've been listening to like Regina and um, uh, the returning and, and some other ones to get the voices back in my head. So thank you everyone for coming. It's so good to see all of you again. And I'm sure more people will come in. So again, I think all of you know this, but just in case you won't be able to unmute yourself just because um, my recording equipment will pick you up and it'll kind of stop the flow of things as we go. But the chat is open, so feel free to chat amongst yourselves. And we are going to hope that husband doesn't invite himself into this chat room, which he probably will later tonight. And we have the recording going. Okay, let's get started. So I have I have the um, program all set up. I just have to do a few little things like the opening, the intro, the extra, the author's note, and then we'll get started right into it. It's probably going to take me a bit to like get the voices down. Again, it's been a little while since I've been Regina. I don't think I've spoken in Regina's voice at all this year until today. So it'll take me probably a little bit to get into the swing of things, but I anticipate we're going to be going really quickly after this. Like Regina and Wolfgang are the ones that I kind of have to work on the most. So there will be times when I'm playing sound clips into my headphones that you guys may or may not be able to hear, but it won't be stuff that relates to the actual story. So you guys could just turn your video off and listen to this whole thing, or you can just laugh at me um, before <laughs> before I get started. So all of you, um, give me a thumbs up. Can you see me and hear me? Okay, so you'll be able to see me. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Whenever I do this, like... I get so excited to see you guys that my heart beats faster and my breath is shorter and I have to, because like, I'm like, oh, is this so fun? I have to like control my breath to get it back under control so I'm not like a breathy sound. It's pretty funny. Okay. All right. We've got this. Here we go. Ouch. I'm going to have to shrink this down actually. I'm going to do that. There we go. Okay. The North, written and narrated by Katie Cross. This has been The North, written and narrated by Katie Cross. Production and text copyright 2023 by Katie Cross. Perfect. Those always go really fast. For those of you wondering, um, TNRR3 is the North Ra um, Reader Request short story number three. It's the, the short term I use when we organize all of our files. Author's note. This story starts out after the third book in the network series, The High Priest's Daughter, ends. I'm going to start that over. I ended that sentence kind of weird. Author's note. This short story starts out after the third book in the network series, The High Priest's Daughter, ends. Merrick is in the Northern Network on a protector assignment, and Bianca is still at home in the Central Network. If you haven't read the network series, I highly suggest you do so first. So every time, <laughs> the reason I'm grimacing is every time um, if, if my mouse isn't like at a certain spot in the program and I, I click in here, it makes like a loud tinging sound in my headphones. <laughs> so annoying, it hurts so much, like ah. All right, we got that down. Hopefully this is going to be a, last time it was like two hours. Hopefully this one is faster. <clears throat> Chapter 
Chapter 1 The high priestess Pharaoh peered at Merrick through glittering slits. She presided on her throne, fingers curled around the end. Miniature garnets sparkled at the tip of each fingernail like crimson cresting moons. A magenta silk turban stood above her proud brow, unmarred by wrinkles. An opal nestled in the middle of the turban reflected the light in a shine of rainbow amidst... Sounded funny. Unmarred by wrinkles. An opal nestled in the middle of the turban reflected the light in a shine of rainbow amidst pearl. So, Farah drawled. That's it then. Derek Black returned you to the north as an emissary between... Oh, you know what? I need to make sure I don't have Farah. I don't think I do. Let's see. So, that's it then. Derek Black returned you to the north as an emissary between the northern network and the central... Oh, that's not... That's not... That's not the north. That's not the north. Where's... So over here I have like a library of voice samples. She drawled. You managed to successfully transfer your position. You managed to successfully transfer your mission. So I'll listen to it and redo the voices to get into the right sound. Of the central network to another more capable witch. Something no one thought possible. Something What's no one thought possible. So, Farah drawled. That's it then. No. Derek Black returned you to the north as an emissary between the northern network and the central network. That's a little better. Yeah, that wasn't it. So, Farrah drawled, that's it then. Derek Black returned you to the... Oh, I keep slipping out. It's so freaking frustrating. Where's Garolyn? Shall require approval over approval. all the absences granted. Granted. Medic. Out of the central network. Out of the central network. So, that's it then. Derek Black returned you to the north as an emissary between the northern network and the central network. I'll try it. So. Farah drawled. That's it then. Derek Black returned you to the north as an emissary between the northern network and the central network. I don't know if I love it yet, but we're gonna we're gonna keep it. I have it flagged so we can go back. Because I need Fera to be a little bit different than her sisters, but she kind of has a twang I'm not super excited about. But we can change it later. We gotta keep going. Yes, dear majesty. You're here to personally deliver messages from him. Yes, and return my response. Ah, I can't do that. Return. Oh, you know what? Sometimes when I practice Regina, like Regina is really like a fun, active voice. So sometimes when I practice her, it's a little bit easier. I only have one sample. She drawled. You managed to successfully transfer your... Po you managed to successfully transfer... You're here to personally deliver messages from him. There we go. So, that's it then. Derek Black returned you to the north as an emissary between the northern network and the central network. You're here to personally deliver messages from him. And return my response. I've pegged you as many things, but never as an ambassador. Yeah. Okay. We're getting it. That's what I told you. It might take me a little bit to warm up. But then I'll get it. I just have to get into it. Midst Pearl. So, Farah drawled. That's it then. Derek Black returned you to the north as an emissary between the northern network and the central network. Yes, your majesty. But then I slip out there. Yes, your majesty. There we go. Yes, your majesty. Yes, your majesty. You're here to personally deliver messages from him. Yes, and return my response. Yes, I've pegged you as many things, but never as an ambassador. The teasing note of her voice against a backdrop of tension paralyzed Merrick. 
Ah, oh, flipping A. I paused too long on those commas. Yes. Of Pegia's many things, but never as an ambassador. The teasing note of her voice, against a backdrop of tension, paralyzed Merrick. Did she joke with him? Wolfgang muttered something under his breath that sounded an awful lot like, We're all doomed. Derek is sufficient. That's Merrick. Derek is sufficiently concerned about the threat that Mabel poses to the Central Network, Your Highness. I'm here to answer questions, with the full context of events within the Central Network, before I take your response to him. I gotta play that back. I kind of make an extra th sound, so I'm gonna redo it. Derek is sufficiently concerned about the threat that... Right there, the threat about the threat that Mabel poses to the Central Network. Derek is sufficiently concerned about the threat that Mabel poses. There we go. Like, we're all doomed. Derek is sufficiently concerned about the threat that Mabel poses to the Central Network, Your Highness. I'm here to answer questions with the full context of events within the Central Network before I take a response to him. And to persuade us to their side. Derek isn't interested in sides as much as he has options. She lifted a message, written and signed by Derek himself. Yeti asks for a formal recognition of friendship between networks. Yes. In oddly perfect timing, perhaps not accidental, Derek spoke to Merrick through the thought-transporting Brotherhood magic. Updates? Soon. Minimal chatter came from the Brotherhood since Merrick received the assignment to return to the North. When activated, the magic had a method of curtailing the messages that didn't apply. Too many witches chattering in his head made for confusing conversations in real life. He shook away those thoughts. Thinking of Derek would lead him to think of Bianca, and no good. Mabel, Farrah drawled, fingertips drumming on the armrest. I've heard nothing about her before. Merrick returned to the present. Her rise to power is recent. The Central Network has been watching her for some time but hasn't had sufficient reason to act so aggressively. Sorry, I'm not standing very close to the mic. I need to check my sound. Seems okay. The Central Network has been watching her for some time, but hasn't had sufficient reason to act so aggressively. Until now. He nodded, a finger perched on her full lips in thought. On her right-hand side, Garolin's flinty stare cut his way. Farah believed in him and his purpose in the Central Network, but Garolin maintained reservations. She had posed the strongest resistance against Fa- But Garolin maintained reservations. She had posed the strongest resistance against Farah's idea to send Merrick to the Central Network. What did she think of his return now? Nothing good if her scowl indicated her thoughts. The third and quietest high priestess, Samantha, sat with a bored expression. Her throne stood the furthest back, almost obscuring her from sight. Outside the throne room, behind walls of glass, Balmberg waterfall plummeted down the mountainside. The ornate folds of mist obscured rolling shadows of distant mountain vistas. What do you think of the danger that Mabel poses to the North Medic? Farah asked. Yeah, we got it, see? Start rolling. I can feel them out. Wolfgang shifted. Garolin's fingers tightened around her thumbs, clenched fists in her lap. Her stony expression sent a shiver down his back. Unseen in the background, Regina lurked. Her magical signature flittered around the room every so often. Like a mountain cat, she slinked from place to place. I believe we have... <clears throat> I believe we have sufficient reason. There we go. I believe we have sufficient reason to form an official friendship with the Central Network. It's the beginning of diplomacy, I think. Because of Mabel. Yes. Why is she so frightening to the Central Network? She wields Almoran magic. Allegedly. Not alleged anymore. The other thing I do is I go back to make sure the back and forth has sufficient accent change.
because there's no dialogue tags there. So I want to make sure my readers, my listeners can tell the difference. Farah's implacable exterior held firm, betraying neither concern nor fear. Mabel is bloodthirsty, high priestess. She has murdered their high priest, her own mother. His mind briefly swept to Bianca's mother. And others. We believe Mabel wants the central network more than anything. Garolin perked up, shoulders spread in a position that filled the chair. Her powerful tone rang in the almost empty room. We? she asked. The Brotherhood, your majesty. You consider yourself part of them. Garolin has a really slow, like, syrupy cadence. I need to make sure that I've kept it consistent. In the future, I shall require approval over all leave of absences granted. You consider yourself part of them. It's kind of like a flaky sound. I don't like her voice. So that one's the we was too strong for Galen. We? She asked. The Brotherhood, Your Majesty. You consider yourself part of them? Merrick hesitated, sensing a slippery slope. I am part of them, Your Majesty, by your approval and assignment. Garolin exhaled a sharp breath. Farah waved a careless hand. We are not here to question Merrick's loyalties. Of course he considers himself part of the Brotherhood, as well he should, and to our benefit. We are here to discuss whether we should agree to an official friendship with the Central Network. There are implic... <laughs> that was not Garolin. There are implications. Ah, oh, I always slip into like a Western Network accent for her. According to the timeline I set, he should be back. There are implications. There we go. I had too long of an eye. There are implications, Garolin said coldly. Exactly so, Farah countered. Big implications amongst the council. Who doesn't like change? After hundreds of years of isolation, Witches might consider an official friendship with the Central Network akin to an act of war. Merrick, does Derek understand the depth of what he asks? He asks... <clears throat> oh my gosh. It's so hard to switch from her to him. He asks nothing yet, Your Majesty. He asks nothing yet, Your Majesty, except an acknowledgement of amicable friendship with no ties. She chortled. Think like your father for a moment, Merrick. Of course Derek asks for something. An official sanction of friendship is a stand. A cheap one, but a stand. I'm not an ambassador, High Priestess. Simply a messenger. I can summon Martin if you like. Farah tapped Derek's letter on her open palm. Lengthy moments passed before she asked, He really sent you just to answer questions and deliver my response? Yes, not to inform and report on the happenings in the North. He knows I wouldn't. I hold loyalty to the North. Garolin scoffed. Farah hummed in her throat, fingers drumming the armrest. No, I believe you wouldn't. I appreciate your delivery and perspective, Merrick. However, we'd be fools to trust a single point of information. Regina has also been out amongst the networks, as she does. Farah added with a wry smile. Gotta let Jean Marie in. With a wry smile. Regina appeared near to Farah. Her arms hung at her side, auburn curls untamed over firm shoulders. She set her jaw on a stubborn line of concentration, like every mission. Farah continued, What Regina has observed over the last several weeks corroborates with what you tell me, which is fortunate. That makes me more amenable to Derek Black, though it doesn't incline me to facilitate an official friendship. Merrick said nothing. Countering over diplomatic angles was Martin's job. While Merrick held affection and concern for the Central and Northern networks, the heart of his nightmares revolved around an impetuous young woman with restless hair. Ran out of breath. Me doing that. Northern networks. The heart of his nightmares revolved around an impetuous young woman with restless hair and gray eyes. He'd focus on safety for Bianca and the networks. Let the politicians do the rest. Farah stood, silk skirts rustling. Garolin followed suit, then Samantha. We have heard you, Farah said. I will speak with my sisters in private. When do you advise I reply? 
No longer than a day or two, Your Majesty. Return at the same time tomorrow. The edges of her mouth softened into a wan smile. Meanwhile, I believe there's a rather excited family awaiting your return. Visit Callie and Jackie as Regina gives you leave. Merrick hid his eagerness behind a poorly trapped smile. Thank you, Your Majesty. I heard a noise behind me. Yeah, I picked it up. Regina gives you leave. Merrick hid his eagerness behind a poorly trapped smile. Thank you, Your Majesty. While the high priestesses filed out, Regina tipped her head toward the hallway. Merrick nodded. Wolfgang grabbed his shoulder, spun him around. Cripes, can't imagine you being an ambassador. You'd burn Alcara to the ground. Come on, I'm starving. Nobody in this bloody castle keeps snacks anywhere. I gotta check Wolfgang's voice, too. I'm pretty sure Wolf, he's just really husky. Just keep moving, Wolfgang had instructed him. Don't draw attention to yourself. Yeah, we're good. The master's tower felt like coming home. Merrick paused inside the thin door, closed his eyes, and breathed deep. The intermingling scents of fresh bread, wet leather, and pine filled his nose. Filled the nose. Raucous laughter burst from the other side of the circular room, near a hearth in the stone wall. Windows opened over views of breathtaking mountains beyond Bomberg Canyon. To the left, a staircase ascended several stories until it ended at Regina's personal quarters at the apex. He thought of his father, Dylan, his family. Well, Wolfgang called from a few steps ahead. About time you returned home, Merrick. His ringing baritone halted the other voices near the fire. As one, four masters pivoted, comprehended Merrick, and cheered. His comrades swarmed him with body-slamming hugs, pounding backpats, and too many questions to answer at the same time. Regina parted the chaos with a spell that shoved Merrick backward. The rest spilled the other way. She swirled a finger at all of them as she stepped into the middle. I gotta practice, Regina. Back away from Merrick. I speak with him first, then the rest of you can have your chance when I'm done. Shouldn't you be training? Or is this nap time for the babies? I don't know if she smells, if she, if she smells, if she sounds too much like Fera, but I don't know that they appear together much. She drawled, you managed to successfully transfer your position. No, yeah, that's a bad sample. We're going to make a new sample. And we're going to do a really bright. Stepped into the middle. Back away from Merrick. I speak with him first, then the rest of you can have your chance when I'm done. Shouldn't you be training? Or is this nap time for the babies? Half-hearted grumbles followed. Half grumbles followed. Merrick dodged a swinging fist with a laugh, then obeyed Regina's silent command to follow her back out of the tower and into her nearby office. No reason to inspire her wrath. Yet, Regina led the masters with impressive skill, but sorely lacked organization around paperwork, messages, and mission reports. Papers cluttered her office, which she claimed was organized well enough because I know where each stack is and what's in it all right. She motioned him into a chair with a pat of her hand on the back, then sat on a creaky old thing behind her desk. Her reddish eyebrows rose, gleaming a muted copper. Well, you're a sight for sore eyes. I could say the same. Oh, but you didn't. Let's splare. Splare. Let's splare. I could say the same. Oh, but you didn't. Let's spare the pleasantries for later, when the kitchen send up a dinner in your honor. Tell it to me straight, Merrick. What's your tactical assessment? Stand behind what I said to Fera. Mabel is a problem. Her shrewd eyes narrowed. I know about Mabel already. Fera's going to ask me what to think. Wolfgang, too. I wanted a supportive front. You thought I'd lie. No, just had to ask myself. This is bigger than helping the central network, you realize. I know. Word will spread if Fera decides to be friendly with the central network. Factions will form amongst the general populace. 
It could be divisive for the North. I know that too. Does Derek? He does. Hmm. Rumors of witches in the North wanting to return to favor with the lower networks have circulated for years now, Regina. This isn't a new debate. They've waged it since the North ceded so long ago. No reason to worsen it unnecessarily. He rolled his eyes. Information was tricky to uncover in the Northern Network. They had no central news source like the Chatham Chatter or News Scroll in the Central Network or news books from the Eastern Network. In the North, villages, towns, or Bomber Castle printed announcements and sent them to town centers, pubs, high witches, and hoped for the passive diffusion of news through gossip and papers. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, forgive me. Through gossip and papers. Not long before he left for the Central Network, uncertainty around the Northern Network's isolationist stance had been circulating through the pubs already. Whether it had settled or groaned, groaned, whether, or groaned, it had been circulating through the pubs already. Whether it had settled or grown, he didn't know. The debate has gained greater fervor the last few years. She glared at him, as if he were solely responsible. Those in favor will see this as an opportunity, and those against it will see it as a threat. Vera's going to be in a difficult position. That Vera sounded funny. Vera. And those against it will see it as a threat. Vera's going to be in a difficult position. The argument is gaining steam. Which means what? That her decision can't be wrong or she risks a civil war? Is Mabel more dangerous to us than civil war? Yes. She scowled. Don't know about you, but I'd rather not be killing my friends based on which side they take. The Central Network isn't our responsibility. His stomach clenched at the words. Her cheeky response cut deep, if only because it was true. The difficulty of straddling worlds, attempting to live in, love, and serve different networks was tricky, draining. How he could feel love for both places, he didn't understand. Let me... <clears throat> Oops, went to Regina. He didn't understand. Let me know how it can help. Derek has sent me here to stay. Derek Black. Regina threw each syllable off the tip of her tongue like she was setting them free. There's an interest in which. He's a bugger to track, but not impossible. Sometimes. Merrick snorted. Good luck. Don't insult me. I managed well enough. She cut him a sidelong glance. I seem to notice that you think it rather thinked you think it rather highly of him. Gans. I seem to notice that you think rather highly of him. Does Derek have you in his pocket? Don't be an idiot, Regina. She transported behind him, whacked him hard on the back of his head. His chin rocked forward, slamming into his chest. He grimaced against the pain that welled up in his jaw. This idiot is your boss. I'd have you remember. Is that the sort of discipline they teach down there? He grimaced, rubbing the painful spot. Right. Well, maybe he saw Regina a little too much like a big sister. Sorry, he mumbled. He insulted me. He think I'd support a decision for the North to make that... <clears throat> think I'd support a decision for the North to make that wasn't... I'll just take this out. That's awkward. Sorry, he mumbled. He insulted me. You think I'd support a decision for the North that wasn't in its best interest? Regina circled around, eyes glittering. I don't know any more, Merrick, because I know you harbor an interest in a very interesting witch, a female, daughter to the esteemed Derek Black. He stiffened in the chair, discomfort forgotten. He sent her a look of warning. Don't bring... <laughs> don't. Uh, don't bring... Bri <laughs> Oh, sometimes I trip over the syllables. Don't bring, don't bring B into this. You did by showing interest in that girl. How much have you been spying? Don't bring B into this. There we go. Her look of warning. Don't bring B into this. You did by showing any interest in the girl. What were you thinking, Merrick? Derek Black's daughter. How much have you been spying? Just enough, apparently. It wasn't a calculated plan, Regina. I can't help how I feel. Yes, you can. You shut it down when it happens, you idiot. Focus on your assigned mission. 
sounded, I cut the R off your, shut it down when it happens. There we go. Can't help how I feel. Yes, you can. You shut it down when it happens, you idiot, and focus on your assigned mission. The words, I tried that and it didn't work, ran through his mind, but he bit them back, saying them wouldn't help. I understand the position it puts me in, he said carefully. Thank you for the warning. Does Derek know? Yes. She blew a raspberry. Then you're a bigger fool than a thought. Tell me about it. He thought oh, that sounded funny too. Well, that Wendy in. Tell me about it. I'll take that out. I don't know if I like that thought. Bigger fool than a thought. Bianca has nothing. To, <laughs> I lost him. Bianca has nothing to do with my mission. There we go. Bianca has nothing to do with my mission. That's no reason to be in this conversation. I will not discuss Bianca Monroe with you, Regina. Not here. Not ever. Got it? The fury in his voice must... Oh, that wasn't fury enough. Bianca has nothing to do with my mission. That's no reason to be in this conversation. I will not discuss Bianca Monroe with you, Regina. Not here. Not ever. Got it? The fury in his voice must have convinced her, or she didn't want to deal with this problem. She had no leg to stand on. Any speculation over his love life was outside the bounds of her responsibility, unless it affected his mission. So far, she had no proof Bianca negatively impacted his goal to gain more information on the Central Network. Fine, she muttered, but to still think you're a fool. Noted. Regina folded her arms across her middle, regarded him. The disquiet he observed softened him. Whatever Regina was or wasn't, she was at least genuine. I'm glad you're safe for now, Merrick, and that you're back home for a bit. Go see your family. Jacqueline has been bothering Wolfgang about you. He's about to braid her hair to a chair and set her in the middle of an island where she can't break free. Merrick laughed. Oh, how he looked forward to Jacqueline's quick prattle, no matter how overwhelming. It had been too long since he'd last seen his family in person. Thanks. Regina nodded to the door. Go. The masters are having a special dinner for you tonight. Bring Callie and Jacqueline, if you like. Elsie is back in the kitchen, and all of us are getting fatter for all the cake she sends up. Merrick stood. I'm glad to be home for a bit. He turned to leave, but stopped. Oh, and Regina. She glanced up, brow high. Pay attention. You might track Derek now, but once he finds out you're watching, you'll never find him again. Late that night, stuffed full of gravy and vegetables and mouth-watering crust, Merrick lounged in front of the fire. His mother sat to his right, arm looped through his, head tilted against his shoulder. She closed her eyes with a contented sigh. I gotta find, oh my gosh, what's her name? Callie. I think she has like a really low, low tone. Medic. Would you like to stay for dinner? Would you like to stay for dinner? Things really We're slow. Out of firewood. We're out of firewood. It's good to see you again, son. Kind of more mellow toned. So with a contented sigh. It's good to see you again, son. You seem happy. Are you happy? He paused, recalling Regina's explosive reaction to Bianca. Did B know Derek had granted his permission for Merrick to court her? If that's what the conversation in Chatham Castle meant, anyway, she probably knew. Also, maybe not. Derek might have only told Merrick, hoping Bianca wouldn't do anything. Merrick brought his thoughts back around, ignoring the fact that when musings around happiness surfaced, so did B. I am happy, mother. Good. Jacqueline slept upstairs, her breath steady and quiet wisps. Her breath... That's awkward. But that's a steady and quiet wisp. There we go. <clears throat> Good. Jacqueline slept upstairs, her breath a steady and quiet wisp after a busy dinner at the Master's Tower. Wolfgang had, indeed, threatened to braid her hair to a chair, then enchant it to sink into and enchant it to sink to the middle of the ocean. Okay.
threatened to braid her hair to a chair, then enchant it to sink to the middle of the ocean if she didn't stop talking. Jacqueline spoke with increasing passion. Merrick leaned closer to the steady flames, a hand outstretched. Are you happy, mother? With you and Jacqueline? Och, of course. I miss Anna and your father. But all things considered, quite happy. Aren't you lonely? She shrugged. Sometimes. Winters are rough up here. They are, but we manage. Wolfgang takes care of us when we need something. You know that. He grunted. Callie straightened, pushing away from him. He met her searching gaze, curious in the low light. Oh, oh it's the worst when my nose itches. <coughs> Sorry, that's awkward. Her searching gaze. The way I said gaze is awkward. He grunted. Callie straightened, pushing away from him. He met her searching gaze, curious in the low light. Something is on your mind. It's also a missing period. Boom. We're going to start that over. Callie straightened, pushing away from him. He met her searching gaze, curious in the low light. Something is on your mind. She tapped a finger against his temple. I see the cogs working. You're just like your father. Whenever Dylan stewed on a problem, he fell silent as a cat about to pounce. Merrick chuckled, braced his forearms on top of his legs. He longed to tell her everything, but didn't know how to start such a conversation. How to explain a woman like Bianca with words. I, uh, met a young woman. Uh-oh. That's about it. Callie pulled her shawl more tightly around her shoulders, amusement in her sparkling eyes and lingering smile. Who is this lucky girl? Her name is Bianca Monroe. A nice name. She's... Someone you'd like, a bit wild. She has a stubborn streak, a network wide, and likes to voice her opinions. An ideal woman for you, then. She nudged his shoulder with hers. You would never settle for a meek doll of a woman. She is ideal, he wanted to say, but the words stuck in his throat. He had no claim on Bianca. He yearned for one, but held smoke and vapor. But, Callie drawled. Merrick sighed, a ragged thing. She's the high priest's daughter. Callie froze, then whispered in astonishment. Derek Black's daughter. Is that his name? Yes. The one you work for. You took his place in the Brotherhood, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> that sounded funny. Uh-huh. Uh, that's not something Merrick would say. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> you took his place in the Brotherhood, right? Yes. Wolfgang spoke about him the other day. He, wait, I thought that leaders in the Central Network weren't supposed to have families. He ran a tongue over his teeth. Better not. Callie settled back against her chair with a long breath. Oh. A hidden laugh filled her voice. Well, as you said, I truly can't wait to meet this girl now. He glanced over his shoulder, her grin sobered. Are you all right, Merrick? A snap of the fire broke the quiet air. I like her. I don't know if I have a chance. It's nerve-wracking. Derek doesn't want me to have anything to do with her, though he recently told me he wouldn't stand in my way. She's... she's one that matters, and she doesn't know, he whispered. The depth of his sorrow felt like a widening gorge. Fire and frost swept him at the same time. Callie's eyes widened. Oh. He scrubbed his face with his hands. I've been lying to her for months, not telling her about the North. She's one of my best friends. I tried to tell her, but Wolfgang wouldn't let me. Neither would Regina, the high priestesses. None of them. I asked all of them. I, I hate feeling like I held back, but I can't change it. When she finds out... Callie put a hand on his shoulder with a tender squeeze. When she finds out, then her answer will be a yes or a no. If she's truly meant for you, she'll understand. With Derek Black as a father, she's probably used to it. The truth didn't comfort him much. I may not see her for a while. Weeks? Months? It depends on what Mabel does and a lot of things. Derek wants me to stay, keep an open relationship, have an immediate response if needed. While I'm on a mission, I can't write to Bianca. Shouldn't write. Time proves I love Merrick. It's going to be okay. I hate it when I do that. 
Alcara doesn't use okay. And sometimes I, I substitute on accident. Shouldn't write. Time proves our love, Merrick. It's going to be all right. Whether... <laughs> right to Bianca? Shouldn't write. Time proves our love, Merrick. It's going to be all right, whatever the result. Callie let her hand fall away. He missed the reassuring touch. Trust yourself, son. Trust her. It's the only choice you have. Boom. That's the end of chapter one. So we always leave a buffer. I think the other chapters are shorter um, and will probably move a bit faster. That one was sort of the long setup. Chapter two. Merrick's teeth sank into his bottom lip. The dining hall at Chatham Castle bounded with life. Guardians, maids, and a few assistants sat shoulder to shoulder across dozens of tables. Tangy roasted pork and fresh bread lingered in the air. He stood against the wall near the busy entrance, invisible, right where no one would expect a witch to hide. His gaze flickered to a giant clock near clusters of windows that looked out onto Leadham Wood. Three minutes of his lunch break remaining. Irritation streaked through him. Regina had expected him to slide back into work with the Masters, which made it difficult to run a protector's mission in the North. He executed Masters' missions, but remained under Zane's supervision, not in one nor in the other. The awkward position created cumbersome situations, worsened by his ever-present thoughts of Bianca. Derek checked on him weekly, Zane daily. Details, questions, reconnaissance work happened for the Central Network rarely. But Derek wanted him to stay put in the North and keep ties open. Unwittingly, Merrick became a pseudo-ambassador. He didn't like it one bit. The driveling work ate up most of his time, rendering him unable to visit Bianca, even unseen. Bianca and Lita sat on the far side of the room, at a table with a solemn energy. Lita pushed food around her plate, lips tucked into a petite frown. Tiny strands of white blonde hair floated around her forehead, illuminating in the sunlight. Bianca held a cup in both hands, arms folded, as she leaned on the edge of the table. A curtain of dark hair splayed across her shoulders. Despite the merry atmosphere, atmosphere, <coughs> sorry, dark hair splayed across her shoulders. Despite the merry atmosphere, a solemn shroud graced their table. Why? He wanted to stride over, whisper in Bee's ear, and convince her to go into the forest where they could talk. The ticking clock stopped him. No time. Instead, he drank her in like a starving man. What would she say if she knew he lurked there, unseen? Who knew? His attention might unnerve her, though she might like it. Thirty seconds. With a growl, he transported back to the northern network. Duty called. Balmberg Castle re 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 <clears throat> Balmberg Castle reminded Merrick of Chatham Castle, except Balmberg settled like a quiet sigh in the evenings. Witches in the north returned to their homes. Only a few lived in the castle, resulting in a placid mood until noise resumed at breakfast. Despite leaving Bianca behind, anticipation zipped through his blood. He jogged up a set of stairs, turned to the right, and strode faster when a thin door came into view. Ten seconds left. The entrance to the master's turret. An incantation opened it just ahead. He closed it firmly behind him. Silence awaited. Regina stood on the other side of the turret with annoyed condemnation in her stare. Merrick stopped behind a row of wooden chairs filled with other masters. The clock ticked the hour the second he halted. Regina sent him a scathing glare of silent rebuke, then began. He suppressed a smile. Her Majesty Farah informed me, as we are hosting the Central Network in an unprecedented negotiation. Derek Black, High Priest of the Central Network, will arrive tomorrow morning. Her gaze flickered to Merrick. Thanks to Merrick, Fera feels it's essential to the safety of the Northern Network at large that we accommodate Derek's request for a discussion. Rita, you... <clears throat> Let Teresa in. For a discussion. Rita, you will be assigned up to... <laughs> Britta, it's requests for a discussion. 
Britta, you will be assigned outer wall security. Raj, Walter, you will be assigned the throne room. Wolfgang and myself will be inside. With medic, she added at the last second. He exhaled in relief. Hands arose. Witches peppered Regina with questions as they discussed Derek's arrival, anticipated length of stay, placement within Balmberg, then the residual concerns. Rolf lifted an arm and asked, What are we to expect from Derek Black? Regina tipped her head to Merrick in a silent assignment. Merrick stepped forward. He's thorough. Before his appointment to High Priest, he was the head of protectors over... <clears throat> Silent assignment. Merrick stepped forward. He's thorough. Before his appointment to High Priest, he was the head of protectors for over 15 years. Expect him to be strategically minded, affable, and surrounded by invisible protectors you won't detect or see. Well, Regina muttered darkly. We'll see about that. Merrick scoffed. He won't be difficult, Britta asked. What are we to expect an irascible High Priest? History has stories of the majesties being threatened on lesser diplomat. <laughs> Ooh, she hard charged there. I gotta set her up anyway. He won't be difficult, Britta asked. Are we to expect? <laughs> hey, doing the heavens. He won't be difficult, Britta asked. Are we to expect an irascible high priest? History has stories of the majesties being threatened on lesser diplomatic missions. Merrick shook his head in a quick back and forth. I'll personally vouch for him. Regina waved a hand. Merrick, you stay. The rest of you are dismissed. The mission begins tomorrow. The masters dwindled out, but Regina didn't make a noise until only the two of them remained. She canted a light eyebrow. You have anything else you want to tell me about Derek? No. She clicked her tongue. I've kept an eye on him the last month and a half, you know. I'm not surprised. Her arms folded across her chest. He seems level-headed enough, but considering the state of his network, it might be show. Any chance he's in league with Mabel? Not even a slight chance. Thanks for putting me in the room, by the way. Fair as request. I don't think you could get at... <laughs> I think the weirdest noise is. Fair as request. I don't think you could get out of it if you tried. Her amusement dwindled into a heavy brow question. You're serious about this, Merrick? You really think a witch, even one as wicked as the Mabel you describe, is worth breaking our isolationism for the last hundreds of years? Yes. Regina sucked in a deep, shoulder-expanding breath. Tendrils of hair wound past her tense jaw and shimmering auburn spirals. Just remember, Derek has put Fera into a terrible position. Whatever she decides will change our lives forever. That is what we will walk into tomorrow. Merrick swallowed back the rising nausea. He shouldn't have been surprised. Deeper waters stirred, but he'd been so occupied attempting to allay both networks, create strategic plans, and communicate the need for such drastic measures, he hadn't looked outside his lane. I'll remember. She laughed, a rich melody. Just don't mess up tomorrow, all right? Only the fate of Alcara rests on your shoulders. He glared. Her shoulder nudged his as she strolled past. See you in the morning. In a rare twist of fate, the master's tower lay empty. Rarely did such a hush occur. Bodies, plans, missions, and the sound of Wolfgang's loud voice requesting food always permeated. Tomorrow, great things would happen, potentially a culmination of his time in the Northern Network, hope for the Central Network, and a return to Bianca. But it wasn't tomorrow yet, which might give him the chance he needed to... A voice filled his head, sent by the Brotherhood magic. Oh, Zane, what is your voice? Chi said through the Brotherhood magic, Clive started a rally and it's growing. That's not new, Zane said. Bianca is there. Okay, it's pretty benign. Derek, reports of an orphanage on fire in the Northern Covens has just come from Scarlet. Zane? Merrick paused, frowned. Why would Zane include Merrick in the report? There had to be... She just arrived at my office, said Mabel kidnapped Bianca after holding the orphanage hostage. Mabel gave herself up for the freedom... Oh, not Mabel. Bianca. Orphanage hostage. 
Bianca gave herself up for the freedom of the orphanage, appears planned. She and Roggenwald are investigating. She reports no sign of Bianca. Zane's placid speech did nothing to quell the sucker punch to Merrick's gut. In an instant, the dark pressure of transporting whisked him away. Magic stole his breath, pressured him to the point of nearly dying before he stumbled out of it. Merrick caught himself against a wall, gasped in air. Zane stared at him with rock-hard eyes. Get back to the north. I just, I know what you heard. Get back to your mission now before Derek storms in here and you lose your place in the Brotherhood. I gotta fix this quote or Debbie's gonna kill me. A pale-faced Scarlet sat across from Zane's desk. Growing chaos in the room beyond likely meant that Zane informed Tiberius and several captains. Merrick opened his mouth, closed it again. What choice did he have? Fine. Please. If you value your career and reputation, Zane said, voice rising with heat, then I suggest that you not request what you were about to request and get out of here. The last thing Derek will want to deal with is a hot-headed protector that left his mission in a fit of passion. I think I'm gonna redo that. He's like, da 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 da. <clears throat> Get out of here. The last thing Derek will want to deal with is a hot headed protector that left his mission in a fit of passion. The fire that slipped through Merrick's body quelled, turning to ice. The good gods. Merrick dragged a hand through his hair, cursed under his breath, and left. The transport to the Western network required as much time, but the agony kept him grounded. He arrived on his feet in a bustling downtown market near the Western Network Castle, the Ark. Where else would Mabel go? The air sweltered in a boiling pot of humanity, where sand spread like a skirt across dingy ground. A camel lumbered by, bellowing. Bells jangled on a leather harness strapped across its neck, tinkling. Merrick transformed his warmer garb to the loose linen pants of the West, altered his facial structure as he sped through a close alley, and hurried along a group of witches closer to the castle. Desperation pushed him. His mind raced with plans to rescue her, even as brotherhood chatter increased in the back of his mind. That's Zane. Okay. <clears throat> increased in the back of his mind. Caffrey and Jacques are responding to the Western Covens now. Oh, that sounded awkward. <clears throat> Caffrey and Jacques are responding to the Western Network now, Zane said in the resounding way that meant he broadcast it to every member of the Brotherhood. Roggenwald and Chi are at the orphanage, checking magical signatures. Derek is with me. All other protectors remain on assignment until further notified. Merrick cursed under his breath, slipped into an invisibility. <laughs> Invisibility is the hardest word for me. <laughs> Merrick cursed under his breath, slipped into an invisibility spell. He climbed up a rain barrel, braced himself against a crate, and reached for the top of a low-slung building of hardened sand. Grain scuffed off, skittering down the wall, as he pulled himself to the top and walked across. The Ark, sprawling amidst the bitty bitty, <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's a bitty city. It's a bitty, bitty city. The Ark, sprawling amidst the busy city of Kustos, lay in view, soaring red sandstones etched to monumental heights. Swin so windows, soaring red sand, I don't, is that a comma? Soaring red sandstones. Let's just do red stone, soaring red stones, then it's not a comma. Soaring red stones, okay. At least it's not bitty. <clears throat> the Ark, sprawling amidst the busy city of Kustos, lay in view, soaring red stones etched to monumental heights. Windows speckled the striated stone deck, glimmering in the late heat. Why does it say desk? <clears throat> Sometimes I don't know my own writing. There was no ideal way to see through those windows from here, unless he infiltrated the interior of the Ark to search, without a mission too risky for his career. Merrick had revealed exactly how, 
Hold on, let me get some water. I'm gonna do this one more time. There was no ideal way to see through those windows from here, unless he infiltrated the interior of the Ark to search. Without a mission? Too risky for his career. Merrick had revealed exactly how much he cared about Bianca to Zane. Not a wise move. Zane had been right to send him back. As the adrenaline and panic ebbed, he realized just how close he'd come to losing trust and respect. Zane saved him. He'd have to clear his name later. First, Bianca. The urge to tear through the Ark didn't wrestle back easily. It wasn't his fight. He wanted it to be, but he had to back away. Let the others try. Zane would take over it himself once the details settled in, he wagered. Mabel would expect the protectors anyway. Merrick fisted his hands, stepped back. Sweat collected in his bent elbows. The sweltering air shimmered against bright sunlight. The heat of the sun on the sand scorched the bottom of his feet. He endured it. A careful bee. He whispered, heart in his throat. Don't do anything stupid. Boom. All right, chapter three. We are cooking right along. Awesome, Z. Chapter three. Derek showed up at exactly noon the next day. Despite recent events, he appeared only moderately stressed. A couple of spells and potions likely cleaned up his appearance, so he didn't look like a statue of paternal rage. Merrick's silent conversations with Chi during the night painted a different picture of the high priest. In short, Derek, without Bianca, was a colossal mess. Derek waited alone in the hallway as Merrick approached. A flicker of relief crossed the high priest's face when he saw him. Merrick held out an arm. Derek clasped it. They broke. This way, your highness. Merrick motioned behind him with a tilt of his head. The majesties are waiting inside. Do you need anything? He knew the answer before he asked the question. Derek shook his head. I'm ready. Merrick turned, waited for Derek to come up to his side, and walked. Sorry about B, he wanted to say, but didn't dare. I didn't sleep all night. I'm livid. How are you? His throat tightened, preventing speech. They navigated the halls in silence until Merrick opened the throne room doors. After a moment's hesitation, Derek stepped inside ahead of Merrick. Flashing lights filled the room with a restless energy. Windows occupied the far wall, revealing the underside of Baumberg Waterfall and hints of the canyon just beyond. The high priestesses waited in their thrones, attention trained forward. As Derek slowly approached, Farah rose. Garolin stood off to Farah's right side, but didn't move from her throne. Samantha remained in the chair furthest back on the left. Wolf game. Wolf game. <clears throat> Wolfgang stood at the edge of the raised dais, hands behind his back, scowl firmly in place. His scarred cheeks curled in strained ways, giving him a ferocious scowl. Merrick stopped ten paces from Wolfgang. Your Majesties, Merrick said. I'm pleased to introduce you to the high priest of the Central Network, Derek Black. Derek Black, Farah called. Welcome to the Northern Network. It's a rare privilege to have you here, which I hope you enjoy. Derek inclined his head. I understand, Your Majesty, and I'm grateful for the chance to speak with you. Farah spread both hands. Then speak. Let us hear what you have to say. Merrick has told us about Mabel, your concerns regarding Almoran magic, and how it might affect the North. I would be grateful to hear your side. It would be my honor to do so, Your Majesty. In fact, a recent development yesterday has proven to me, yet again, how imperative it is to stop Mabel now. I believe she's headed your way. For the next ten minutes, Derek gave a precise recounting, combined with the brief history of Mabel. Sorry, that pause was awkward. I need a different breath. For the next ten minutes, Derek gave a precise recounting, combined with a brief history of Mabel. He'd memorized a bullet-point list of every threat she posed against the North, backing each instance up with accurate statements. 
For the weighty information he gave, the speech rolled quickly. At the end, a sweltering dead air hung like fog. Farah rolled her lips together. She gazed beyond Derek, head tilted. Your points are interesting, she finally said. Merrick can attest to their veracity. Yes, Your Majesty, Merrick said. I've been part of, seen, or can attest to mocha, mocha, to mocha what you mentioned. I have been part of, seen, or can attest to most of what he mentioned. Her glassy expression didn't change. Derek, seemingly unbothered by her long pause and musings, said nothing. He stood with his arms loose at his side. Garolin studied him carefully. Your daughter is safe, you say? I'm not going to put that dialogue tag in. She's alive. She's likely to be kept alive if Mabel is using her against you. I hope, your majesty. Merrick's heart nearly leaped out of his chest from the tension. Zane had sent no Bianca updates through the night, nor this morning. Merrick had transported twice to the west, only to leave shortly after. Undoubtedly, they'd already started a rescue mission, but Derek wouldn't mention that. I hear your petition, High Priest. Call me Derek. A ruffle of amusement wrinkled her brow. She inclined her head. Thank you, Derek. We will take into consideration what you ask. Might I say one more thing? She nodded. I predict Mabel will request to come here. If she does, I don't think she'll ask you to join her cause. She knows you're too careful. It would be... It would be... It would be... Oh, I lost my spot. I hate it when I do that. There we go. Join her cause. She knows you're too careful. It would waste the one chance she might have to speak with you. Mabel will ask you not to interfere as she fights with me. Farah hummed. In that case, your majesty, I would ask that you consider the long-term ramifications of allowing a woman like her to have power. You want me to refuse the offer? Yes. A bold ask. I accomplished nothing by being timid, your majesty. I have my doubts you'll be willing to... I have my doubts you'll be willing to join him. Timid, your majesty. I have my doubts you'll be willing to join a war that isn't your own, but I've learned to never make assumptions. To be honest, Derek, I'm unlikely to give her admittance to my network at all. Would that be enough of a stand for you? Derek hesitated. Merrick clenched his teeth. He knew what Derek debated in his brilliant mind, though they hadn't discussed it. Because it's what he would say. I have justification to ask this of you, your majesty. Call me Farah. Derek softened ever so slightly. For a heartbeat, Merrick saw a flash of the terror, the righteous fatherly rage Derek wielded. It disappeared back into his steady facade. Thank you, Farah. When Mabel requests to speak with you, if you were to admit her and listen, it might give me a chance to save my daughter. Interest lifted Farah's eyebrow. Oh. Eager now, Merrick... I always do that. I always mix Derek and Merrick. Oh. Eager now, Derek stepped forward. His breath came faster, more thready. If you're inclined to meet Mabel and measure her yourself, I ask only that you might inform Merrick. Allow us to work Mabel's presence here to our advantage. Farrah mulled that over. Garolin's dubious gaze promised glacial hope. Farrah would consider an errand of mercy. Garolin would not. She didn't tolerate risk of network isolation and safety. Certainly not to spare the life of a witch to whom she held no obligation. I will consider your request, Eric. We'll send a medic with our final decision. Expect to hear from me no later than tomorrow. Several weeks later, okay. I'm just trying to make sure that time gap is right, but it is. Several weeks later. Merrick brushed. That sounded awkward. Merrick. Merrick brushed granules of rufescent sand from his clothes. Winds in the Western network tangled his hair, dusting grains on the base of his scalp. No sign of Bianca, not a single one. The futility of searching for her wasn't lost on him. Zane worked daily at breaking her free, but Merrick couldn't help himself. Merrick navigated through Bomberg Castle as he scrubbed the debris free from his hair. He had 20 minutes before another meeting with Regina. An update from the Majesties about... He stopped short of running into a beefy chest. Wolfgang barred his path. Can I help you? Merrick drawled. 
Mabel's coming. A pit dropped into Merrick's stomach, sinking like an anchor. When? Tomorrow. Wolfgang backed away. A long sword bounced against his thigh. Don't know for sure, but to think she's bringing your little tart with her. Merrick scowled. Wolfgang slammed a palm into sh- Sound drunk. Maybe it was her turn. So. Tart with her. Merrick scowled. Wolfgang slammed a palm into his shoulder and laughed. Well, get ready. Vera said to tell Derek. He has 12 hours to plan whatever he's gonna do. Sounds like Mabel's little jaunt is turning into a protector mission. Merrick ignored the growls of furious witches as he strode down a narrow dirt road the next day. Shrill exclamations of rage punctuated the otherwise peaceful mountain air. You're mad. You can't block the entire highway. Let us through. A crisp breeze swept over his hot skin, kept all the hotter by the half armor he wore in the increasing temperature. A contingent of North guards stared dumbly at him as he approached. Get ready, he ordered. If she's one we expect. If she's one we expect. That's so creepy. There we go. Oh, sorry. I started the playback too late. As he approached, get ready, he ordered. If she arrives when we expect, maybe we'll arrive any minute. Uh. If she comes, there we go. I don't like to use the same word within the same paragraph or two. As he approached, get ready, he ordered. If she comes when we expect, maybe we'll arrive any minute. Don't interact with her. He stopped to peer down the road. Carts, horses, and a couple of braying donkeys littered the thin space. The captain of the guard edged his way through the waiting contingent, brow high. Why are we shutting down the road? He asked. Someone is transporting in. To here? Merrick ground his molars together. Yes, to here. Why? Because we don't want her arriving near the castle too soon. He mentally snapped, but breathed through the irritation. Intricate puzzle pieces, put together last night in a planning session between Derek, Zane, Merrick, and Wolfgang, lay at his feet. Each piece needed to fall just so. Once they confirmed Mabel's arrival, Merrick had to buy time for Derek to arrive at Bomberg Castle and put himself in position. The high priest couldn't wait around Bomberg Castle all day, which meant Wolfgang instructed Mabel to transport to a specific spot. There's too many S's right there. Just had to be ready for it. Into position. The high priest couldn't wait around Bomberg Castle all day, which meant Wolfgang instructed Mabel to transport to a specific spot away from Bomberg Castle. They'd escort her to the castle. They'd escort her the rest of the way. Again, I don't like the repetitive words or phrases, so as I record, I just go through and change them. Away from Bomberg Castle. They'd escort her the rest of the way. On an old sheep cart, Wolfgang suggested with a cackle. Let the old witch see how we really feel about her. Merrick agreed. Tell the witches they can turn around, take a different route, or wait. Merrick said, we'll be leaving in five minutes with any luck. The captain shrugged, turned around to relay the message. Derek spoke into Merrick's mind from somewhere at Chatham Castle. We're heading to the north in ten minutes. Bianca hasn't arrived, still waiting for her. Halt! Merrick cast an in... And, and, and see, invisibility is the worst. Merrick cast an invisibility spell and dodged into the trees. About 30 paces away, a circle of North Guards surrounded Mabel and a familiar black haired witch. Bianca's must hair, wide eyes, tilted chin appeared fine. No major bumps, bruises, or injury. She stood on her own. Bianca arrived, he reported. Oh, Peter's healthy. I scratched my arm. Yeah, I am. Um, I like my microphone so strong. I accidentally like hit my arm on the board and you can hear it. Bianca arrived, he reported. Peter's healthy, not bound. Stood on her own. Bianca arrived, he reported. Appears healthy, but bound. Mabel is with her. I'll pass it on to Wolfgang. Derek said, Regina, too. Understood. Merrick stayed out of sight while Blaine, a burly North guard, dealt with Mabel's sneer and caustic voice. 
Bianca's gaze darted around. Clearly, she hadn't known what she was getting into. Her hands rose in the air but didn't tremble. Blaine ignored her. North guards tied both of them, threw burlap sacks over the top of their heads. Once the burlap bag covered their eyes, Merrick removed the invisibility spell and rushed to Bianca's side. He knocked away a hand that reached for her. I got her. The moment he touched her, the last several months dissipated away. Futile searching in the west, agonizing at night. The firmness of her body at his side washed all the horror away. With a steady grip, he led Bianca to the waiting wagon. She stumbled, still impressively sure-footed, as she followed. He wanted to pull her into his arms and kiss her the way he'd been dreaming of for months. What could he say? This was not the way he wanted her to figure out his great secret. He soaked up the reassurance he had. The faint smell of wild things drifted from her hair, stirring up memories that made his stomach smolder. On his quiet command, she scooted into the cart, then shoved to the left as far as she could. Mabel growled from the right side. With a cluck, the horses pulled. Merrick strode at the back, not taking his eyes off Bianca. I'm with B, he said to Derek. I won't leave her. Awesome. We are well over halfway in an hour. So I think we have probably like half an hour. There's only not quite two, 2,000, only 1,000. 1300. These three are the smallest and they're going to go the fastest. So hopefully we should finish in like 20 minutes. These move quick. Chapter 4 Solemnity accompanied their arrival at Balmberg, except for the voices that filled Merrick's head. Approaching. <laughs> Sorry, that's not Derek. That's Merrick. Voices that filled Merrick's head. Approaching, he said to Derek. Wolfgang is on his way down. I'm just in position. B? She's fine, not a word. You stayed with her the whole time? I'd never leave her. The North Guards at Balmberg held, held, heady ears. <laughs> held, ready, sneers. The North Guards at Balmberg held ready sneers when Mabel's sheep cart arrived. Signs of the civil divide in the North could expect to grow from here on out. Signs of the civil divide the North could expect. This is awkward. Signs of the civil divide the North could expect. Oh, there we go. They, their foul tempers were signs of the civil divide the North could expect from here on out. Okay, that's a little bit better. The North Guards at Balmberg held stead should be stead da -da -da -da, castle. There we go. You can also hear my mouth noise right there, so I've got to get that off. The North Guards at Balmberg Castle held ready sneers when Mabel's sheep cart arrived. Their foul tempers were signs of the civil divide the North could expect from here on out. These guards swayed to isolation, clearly. Before the wagon rolled to a stop, the guards reached inside. Merrick crossed the space between him and the back a second too late. They'd already hauled Bianca and Mabel out. With a scowl, he caught Bee before she tripped. He sent a sharp glower to a young guard, who immediately backed away. Easy, he murmured. Bianca stiffened. A sharp intake of breath made him wince. Uh-oh, she'd recognized his voice. Shikes, but he'd done it now. He didn't need to see her face to know she caught it. One of her hands reached out. Chains clinked around her wrists, sending a shot of rage through him. Unable to help himself, he squeezed her arm and hoped she'd understand the silent command. I'll take this one, he called. Follow me. We're taking them inside Bomberg Castle. The maze of the lower Bomberg Castle floors followed. Cool hallways, turning mazes. Turning passages. There we go. <clears throat> So floors followed. Cool hallways, turning passages, ups and downs, enough to disorient any witch, head covered or not. That's so awkward. Followed. Cool hallways, turning passages, ups and downs, enough to disorient any witch, head covered or not. Merrick kept a firm hold on her, guiding her along the way. 
Gradually, she relaxed by degrees. She must be burning with questions. Mabel probably had her spelled silent. She wouldn't risk Bianca saying something or escaping. Once they entered the main castle, Merrick slowed. The North Guards leading Mabel did the same. He steered them around a last corner near the back and saw Wolfgang standing there as expected. When Merrick stopped, Bianca's back touched his chest, an almost irresistible invitation to pull her into his arms and reassure her. You'll be fine, he wanted to say. We won't let anything happen to you. I'm here. But he couldn't. But isn't there... He couldn't. He had to let her go, though he didn't want to. Wolfgang nodded once to him. Merrick let the tips of his fingers trail along her back as he stepped away. Only the North Guards around him, his place in the Masters and Protectors, kept him from taking her with him. Where are you? Derek asked. Merrick retreated almost around the corner but halted. Wolfgang spoke with Mabel, the same irritated expression on his face as Blaine. By the good gods, but Mabel was a nasty piece of work. Bianca stood with her shoulders back, saying nothing. With a growl, he jogged down the corridor. On my way. Merrick waited in the throne room. A preternatural silence burdened the space. Only the flashing lights of the Balmberg waterfall offered movement. Behind a column, Derek hid. Merrick attempted for a fourth time to detect his magic to no avail. What hiding or suppressing spell did he use? Knowing Derek, it could be anything ancient and under... Just use used. Not known. Did he use? Knowing Derek, it could be anything ancient and not well known, probably hidden from Alcara, just for the protectors to exploit. They were masters of magic for a reason. This is a reconnaissance mission, Derek said. Confirm your understanding. Understood. You do nothing rash. Merrick forced himself to say, Understood. You do not save my daughter unless I tell you to, no matter how much you might want it. Merrick hid a scowl. Understood. You plan on bee walking away from this with Mabel. I got it. Derek ignored the snap in his tone. As far as delicately planned missions went, this was the most complicated Merrick had taken part in yet. Not complicated, but intense. The two-stage plan would require an extraordinary amount of patience and discipline, something Derek must exercise thanks to years of practice. With Bianca on the line, Merrick didn't know how Derek held back. Merrick stood opposite Derek, closer to the doors where Wolfgang would bring Mabel and Bianca through. The high priestesses would be as far away as possible, hidden behind a barrier of protective spells cast and maintained by Regina. Observe, Merrick reminded himself. That's it. Just observe. He clenched his fists. He could watch B enter the room, gather information, make notes in his head, then allow her to walk out again with that vile filth pile. He could. He had to believe that. Wolfgang's heavy tread sounded in the hall, then stopped at the door. It opened to reveal Mabel with a bright yet cutting smile. Bianca followed, still in chains. While the back-and-forth discussion volleyed between Farah and Mabel, Merrick turned his attention to the mission. Detail gathering, fact finding. What sort of chain did Mabel have Bianca in? Obvious weak points? Did Mabel use known magic? What could Merrick detect in use, and was it comprehensive? Did Mabel have something in play that the current magic he detected not cover? Did Mabel have something in play that the current magic he detected? That, how about I just say? That might not. The other sentence is kind of weird. Prehensive. Did Mabel have something in play that he might not detect? Derek would ask and note the same questions with his own answers. Together, they'd knit a comprehensive idea of what to expect. Derek would prowl closer to Mabel, though, to figure out more. Farah, as ready as any defender of the North should ever be, exact. Executed. Executed. <laughs> Sorry, I missed the cue. <laughs> Farah, as ready as any defender of the North ever should be. Oh my gosh, I just got that wrong. 
Farah, as ready as any defender of the North should ever be, executed her part admirably. Her voice rang with authority, but openness. Mabel wouldn't be likely to suspect anything from Farah. Merrick forced his gaze away from Bianca a tenth time. No major spells on Mabel, except a soaking of transformative magic. How old of a hag was she, anyway? She might not like... She might like... She might like a peer. <laughs> this is excellent proofreading, let me tell you. Was she, anyway? She might appear to be 23, but she had to be pushing 80. Once he gathered the gist of the information, sent it to Jacques to record for review later, he turned to B. Merrick gritted his teeth when Mabel forced her to kneel. Bianca glared in mute defiance, but obeyed. Mabel sauntered closer to the high priestesses, leaving B alone. He clenched back the urge to whisk her away, rip her out of the castle. Bigger things moved in the background. He couldn't help himself entirely. Silently, he stalked closer, affected by a deep thrill as he closed in. As expected, the moment Mabel moved away, Bianca snapped into assessment. Her gaze studied the room, darted around. He slipped behind a curtain and loosened his... It's invisibility, you guys. I tell you, every time, it's like a tripwire for me. <clears throat> he slipped behind a curtain and loosed his invisibility spell. As commanded by a different incantation, a tray appeared near her. The shiny reflection of the teapot would be enough for her to see him. She'd notice. She always did. Shortly after, a tremulous inhale followed. She stared at the pot, wide-eyed. He could just see himself in the reflection, distorted by the curve of the pot. Merrick crouched, leaning forward. Are you all right, B? Hesitation, then a nod. Locks of ebony hair swayed down her back. Her cheeks appeared thinner than before. Bags under her eyes testified to stress. All in all, she fared better than expected. He cast an uncertain glance to Mabel. Seeing nothing changed, ventured another question. Can you speak? Her hair swayed ever so slightly. You're talking to her, Derek said. Accusation riddled his tone, but Merrick ignored it. Yes. A pause. Tell her to hold on a little longer. We have a plan, a solid one, and it's going to work. Your father wants me to tell you to hold a little longer. We have a plan, a solid one. It's going to work. Her shoulders expanded in a breath, fingers tangled together, the knuckles wide at the edges. Merrick risked another glance higher. Mabel continued to speak with Farah. He lowered, crouching closer. By the good gods, this wasn't how he wanted it to happen. Wanna saw you on the back of that wagon with her. Hi, I'm sorry this happened. How she hurt ya? Another quick shake that he didn't believe for a second. Too fast of a response. Mabel might feel powerful, but she wasn't foolish. She might toss B around, but wouldn't cause extensive damage. Yet. Mabel cut a quick glance to Bianca, saw her returning glare, then back to Farah. The time to chat with B closed. Panic rushed through him, fast as wildfire. He needed to give her some hope, something to hold on to. I wish I could set you free now, but we have to wait. Do you understand? Another brave nod. Merrick closed his eyes for a moment, pulled in a deep breath. He had to go. Mabel couldn't see him, and there was more to do before they completed this first stage. You trust me. Her immediate nod sent a thrill through him. By the gods, but there was no strength like B believing in him. We'll get you out of there. You can do this, B. You're made of steel. If anyone can survive Mabel, it's you. I'll see you soon, little troublemaker. Mabel edged closer as Merrick issued a transportation spell to the other side of the room. He'd invisibly wait for things to settle, just in case Derek made an unexpected move. He kept an eye trained on B until Mabel retreated to her side, yanked her off her knees, and, with a falsely coy smile, transported them both back to the central net. Dang it, it's Western Network. With a falsely coy smile, transported them both back to the Western Network. Need a drink. <clears throat> Almost done with this chapter. Derek slapped Merrick on the shoulder, but with a camaraderie Merrick would have expected at a different time. He did well, Merrick. 
Derek leaned on a railing with both fists, overlooking the tumbling water of the Bomberg waterfall as it dropped fathoms below to the churning river. Despite years of experience in this spot, Merrick's stomach still caught every time he looked down. Gauzy sheens of water, like veils of silk, undulated in mist as it plummeted. One slip and a tumble to the death awaited. First stage is done, Derek said, jaw tightening after a moment of thought. I'm glad it's over and successful. I don't know how you did it, not taking her away. She's a strong girl. Derek spoke with adamant certainty, as if he convinced himself. She'll make it through. It helps that Mabel would lose her bargaining power if Bianca's dead. The idea sent frost through his bones. Did help to see her alive and well, though, Derek said quietly. The gods, but I love that girl. Same, Merrick thought. Somewhere in the background, Wolfgang and Regina spoke with Farah. They finalized plans, chose guardians to be present when Mabel returned. Masters would station throughout the throne room and the Bomberg castle for stage two. Farah had been kind enough to risk a second visit. During that time, Merrick would remain right with B. Ah. <laughs> My lip was so itchy. It was driving me crazy. <clears throat> Merrick would remain right with B. Derek leaned back with a punctuated breath. Our networks may not have been in communication, but I know what issues you face. Farah is cooperating fully with the central network, which isn't something I expected. I'm inclined to think I have you to thank for softening her. Brought out of reveries, Merrick blinked. Sir? Because you trust me, she trusts me. You placed importance on this mission and you stood behind my words, so Farah's doing the same. Derek straightened, held out a hand. Despite ragged exhaustion, he maintained the same stolid determination as always. Thank you, Merrick. I owe you. There's, uh, there we go. And right here. A dozen replies surfaced. Every one of them involved his deepening regard for Bianca. That's my job, sir, and sincerely meant. Merrick accepted the arm clasp, gratified by a surge of pride. Derek offered the highest compliment, his respect. A hard-won prize for any protector. I know, that's why it means so much. Prepare yourself, Merrick. So far, the plan has moved forward as we hoped, which is always cause for concern. Tomorrow, Pharaoh will call Mabel back. You'll grab B, I'll take care of Mabel. With any luck, we'll detain that wretched woman and my daughter. If we can only save one, you know it better be Bianca. Merrick nodded, a queasy mixture of hopeful and terrified. I'll be there, sir. Woo -woo. Two shortest chapters coming right up, my friends. Chapter 5 No matter how hard Merrick tried to avoid reviewing Mabel's second visit, and beyond... Visit came out funny. we try that again. Visit. Chapter 5 No matter how hard Merrick tried to avoid reviewing Mabel's second visit, and Bianca's emancipation from that horrid witch, he couldn't stop seeing the images. They flashed through his head in quick succession, intrusive and demanding and breathtaking. Bianca kneeling on the floor, Mabel's irate expression as Wolfgang, transformed into Farah, refused to help Mabel's quest to break the central network. Bianca drop into unconsciousness. Get a use watch there. His heart had lurched into his throat as he raced to B's side while Derek attempted to battle. <laughs> oh my gosh. I almost said bottle Mabel. <laughs> his heart had lurched into his throat as he raced to B's side while Derek attempted to battle Mabel. Mabel disappeared too quickly. Eventually, B returned to life, dazed and not quite herself. Free, he reminded himself. She's free. She's safe. In the present moment, Bianca sat at his side, head tipped back. The heat of Mother's shingles warmed the back of his legs where they sat on top of the roof. Starlight limbed her firm features, so like her father, as she studied the giant sky. He'd finally lead bare the truth. 
his life in the North, the weird collection of events that led him to the Brotherhood in the Central Network. Every moment brought them to here. Her response had been calmer than he expected. Bianca's shoulders expanded under a deep breath. Merrick trained his gaze ahead. Mountains cut ebony shadows against the spattered stars, like ragged teeth in a velvet sky. He thought of his father, his sister, Anna. Their memories didn't ache so much. That's great for you, B said, swallowing hard. Going to the Western Network with Zane next? This is the kind of mission every protector, and master, I suppose, dreams about, right? Infiltrating enemy territory, spying on the opposition. Merrick almost laughed. When Bianca was part of the picture, nothing was what he thought it should be. He glanced at her, one eyebrow lifted. Maybe. If she noticed his drawling tone, she gave no sign. He'd given her the truth and... He, let's see, we already said that, so he also told her no, and I gotta fix this up here. Because Debbie will come at me if I don't. Tone, she gave no sign. He also let her know what she could expect to happen next. In the morning, he'd escort her safely back to the central network, then immediately... <laughs> L's, man. She gave no sign. He also let her know what she could expect to happen next. In the morning, he'd escort her safely back to the Central Network, then immediately leave to help Zane find allies in the Western Network sands. Maybe for protectors who don't have something to lose, he added. Her hair spilled in long banners on either side of her face. A thoughtful glint sparkled in her eyes. Do you have something to lose? His heart raced under his ribs. Much more of this eagerness than he'd bruise. Trust Bianca to take his heart and irreparably change it. I hope so. She sucked in a breath. Well, now or never. Merrick grabbed her chin, pulled her close. Her lips softened against his as he hooked an arm around her neck. Space banished. Bianca smelled like warmth and grit and leaves and smoke. A mixture of forest and fire. She took his breath away. He paused, pulling back. Slowly, her eyes opened to his. Surprise clouded her Argentine gaze. A smile grew across his face when he realized he'd tangled her hand in his hair. He realized he, oh, that she'd... That should be back. And there's something else up here. We don't... Sorry, I said one word wrong. A smile grew across his face when he realized she'd tangled her hand in his hair. He hadn't even noticed. Dangerous, this wild child. I've been wanting to do that for a while. She laughed, breathless. Took you long enough. He pressed his forehead to hers. I like you, be More than I should. You're different. Strong as stone. Not to mention you're probably the only witch I know who could put up with me. Let's try this out. You and me. Her wide eyes blinked at him, so solemn. Unable to read the thoughts that lay back there, he waited. Finally, a hint of a smile appeared. With it, a flood of acceptance. Certainty. I suppose courting between two witches like us would never really be romantic, would it? I'm not sure either of us knows how. Is this your way of letting me down? It's my way of saying yes. Her fingers found his. When she hooked their hands together, he could have shouted, danced, pulled down a star to give to her, though its luster would be nothing in the wake of her light. It's not just because every other guy is scared you'll beat him in a sword fight, is it? A bright smile wreathed her face. Definitely. My options are very limited. She tilted her head toward the south, where the central network lay far, far beyond. It's either you or Tiberius. Merrick scoffed. Good, because I've already beat him. Bianca tried to laugh, but he captured it in another kiss. When he pulled away, a dazed expression lingered. She blinked several times. A light brush blush i said brush several times a light blush rose to her cheeks as she cleared her throat brought her knees into her chest her fingers linked through his resting on top of his thigh merrick lounged back against the hot shingles more relaxed than he had been ever what was it like bianca tensed through the shoulders then relaxed with an exhale sorry my husband coughed i have to see if i can hear it We're good. 
Sometimes it picks it up. It's a crazy microphone. Max with an exhale. Her long lashes lingered in thought before she peered back at the stars. Frightening. Did Mabel hurt you? Ignored me, mostly. Threatened me a few times. Scare tactics and things. A lot of hidden memories must lay back there for her to speak so vaguely. He knew the strategy well. Wolfgang used to ask him about his father, and he'd respond the same way. Enough details to stop the questions, but never too much. Did you ever think we wouldn't get you out? No. She turned to meet his gaze, chin resting on her shoulder. Not once. I knew you would. I just didn't know what would happen in the meantime. I worried Papa would sacrifice himself to it. Merrick snorted. She knew Derek well. What do you think is... Ah, it's Bianca, not Merrick. What do you think is going to happen, Merrick? With Mabel and the West Guards and the Borderlands and all this unknown. I think we're going to fight. I think we're going to win. She eyed him. At what cost? That's the question every guardian asks before battle. That's the question no one can answer. A pointless question, really. You're already committed. There's nothing to do now but focus on the objective. You just have to get through. A starkness entered her voice. I don't like that. Are you frightened? Her jaw tensed as she stared out at the mountains. Yes, I am. He squeezed her fingers, scooted closer. If it helps, I'm not frightened. Stay with me, little troublemaker, and I'll keep you safe. Bianca leaned into him. She tipped her head onto his shoulder and closed her eyes. He smelled wild things. They're both closing eyes here. I'll keep you safe. Bianca leaned into him. She tipped her head onto his shoulder. He smelled wild things and closed his eyes. Whatever happened in the networks didn't matter. This moment would always belong to them. Woo woo! We got one more chapter of the same length and then we can chat. We just stick in there, whoever's left. I can't see you. Maybe no one. Maybe I'm talking to myself. <laughs> That would be kind of funny. <laughs> Chapter 6 The sound of weeping resonated across Chatham Castle grounds. Smoke and dirt poised as clouds from the collapsing of the gatehouse choked the air. Smoke and dirt poised as clouds from the collapsing of the gatehouse choked the air. sound right <coughs> sorry poised as clouds from the collapsing of the gatehouse choked the air okay it's okay clouds from the collapsing of the gatehouse choked the air despite the weight of a press in Elmoric <laughs> I'm starting to get tired and you can tell gatehouse choked the air Despite the weight of oppressive Almoran um, magic lifting, the world paused with a leaden weight. I did a weird pause there. It'd probably be fine, but... Gatehouse choked the air. Despite the weight of oppressing... Oh my gosh, you guys. The gatehouse choked the air. Despite the weight of oppressing... <laughs> ah, I should have left it. I just... Try to make it perfect, and then this happens. Try to be crazy. We're almost done. Gatehouse choked the air. Despite the weight of a... Of... <laughs> oh my gosh. This is like time six. Gatehouse choked the air. Despite the weight of oppressive Almoran magic lifting, the world paused with a leaden weight. Oh, I have weight toys. The leaden energy. I did it, and now we have to redo it. <gasps> Despite the weight of a... Of <laughs> oh, I hate this part. Despite the weight of oppressive Almoran magic lifting, the world paused with a leaden energy. Merrick counted 10, 27, 39, dead. Stop, he told himself. It's not worth it. A pair of boots stepped up behind him, followed by a hand on his shoulder. Loose rocks and gravel crunched beneath the sound. 
A rumbling, thick voice followed, burdened by a slight rasp. Take thy priest inside. Have an apothecary check him. Now. Matthias. Matthias stood just behind Merrick's right shoulder, painted with dust. Blood oozed down his bottom lip, split in half. Part of his half shirt. Part of his half shirt. Part of his shirt. <clears throat> bottom lip, split in half. Part of his shirt had torn off a shoulder, and black charred armor haphazardly covered his chest. He leaned to one side. His nose twitched every few seconds, as if fending off a grimace. Shock rendered Merrick momentarily mute. Why would Matthias give orders, if... Oh. Zane must be gone. Tiberius was gone. Derek lay on the floor next to his daughter, bloodied and scraped and almost dead. Slowly, Merrick's brain pieced together. Move, he thought. I'll have to move. It'll make sense if I move. All his protector training culminated in and had been created for moments like this. With a quick nod, Merrick stepped into motion. I'll take care of him. Matthias eyed Bianca, then lifted his brow in silent question. Her too, Merrick said. Matthias moved on. Slowly, Merrick noticed the return of the Brotherhood chatter in his mind. Sturdy voices, calm amidst the swilling upheaval and fog of battle. She gathered responses to see who survived. Roggenwald muttered curses as he reported the High Priestess dead. Merrick ignored them to crouch in front of Bianca. He put a hand on her knee. Her head lifted, slate eyes swimming with thousands of wary questions and unshed tears. Only a few steps away, Mabel lay sprawled on the stones. Derek slumped close to Bianca, grunting through labored breaths. I'm going to take your father to his apartment, B. Then I'll be right back for you. Bianca, don't move. His voice strengthened as he spoke. Wordlessly, Bianca nodded. Her gaze tilted toward Mabel, as if by compulsion, and she shuddered. Merrick reached for Derek, who attempted to stave him off with a weak bat of his hand. Listen up, old man, Merrick said lightly, keeping a careful eye on B. It's time to get you taken care of. You have a network to run. Certainly isn't nap time, you ragged goat. Only because Derek was half dead did Merrick dare such lighthearted liberties. They could all use a little tension release. Derek didn't open his eyes, nor fight Merrick as he dropped Derek's arm around his shoulder. His head lolled onto his chest. Merrick's thighs burned as he struggled to lift Derek to his feet. An injury, maybe? He'd deal with it later. He shouldered the high priest, issued the transportation spell, and brought them outside Derek's apartment door. Sorry, I had to, <laughs> I had to stop to swallow. <clears throat> The moment he arrived, Reeves appeared, pale, haggard, with a single ruffle in his shirt. He encompassed Derek in a glance, then shoved the door open with a calm nod. On the divan. Derek's feet barely shuffled as Merrick staggered inside, then carefully lowered him to the appointed divan. Before Merrick had straightened, a rapid knock on the door followed. Apothecary, announced a high-pitched voice. Matthias sent me. Merrick eyed them, and recognizing the squat, short woman... I hide them. We're going to do this. Merrick recognized. This. <clears throat> Recognizing the squat short woman from other times in the castle, he nodded for Reeves to admit her. She had no transformative magic or other spells around her, though it was hard to know who to trust. I'll be back with Bianca, he said, in half an hour. Reeves nodded. For once in her life, Bianca did exactly what he asked. She sat in the same spot, expression like glass. Her knees tucked into her chest, her elbows crossed on top to hold them in. Dirt marred her cheeks, her face. She stared at the broken fragments of the castle with a distant stare. Sluggish life moved on the remnants of the wall. Increasing wails swelled. Swelled. The swelled. I might have to change this. Increasing wails swelled from all parts of the Baileys, the forest, the road to Chatham City. Dying gurgles, screams for help, the shuffle of weary feet. Guardians moved. Protectors vanished. Apothecaries shouted. Life restored. Merrick crouched in front of Bianca. When he put a hand on her cheek, she startled. 
Her eyes clapped on his, then she calmed. Come on, little troublemaker, he whispered. We need to get you out of here. Papa, safe in his apartment with apothecaries in Rees. Rees came out a bit weird. Safe in his apartment with apothecaries in Rees. He grasped her hand in his, tugged her to her feet. She followed like an obedient child. Any minute now and she'd remember Camille. Hear about Stella, Zane, Tiberius. He needed to buy her time. Just a few minutes to recuperate so she could handle the battering waves that approached. The aftermath. Once she stood, he transported them to the northern edge of Leadham Wood, where no smells of the explosion wafted. Night lay in cool repose on a tranquil forest, and winds fluttered out of the northern mountains, as if none of that had happened. They landed in the well of two roots. He held her hand and waited for her to comprehend what he'd done. Bianca stirred back to life, gaze darting over the forest, the mountainous backdrop. Where are we? Leadham Wood. Where? Not far from the north. It's so quiet. Give yourself a minute, B. We'll go back. And when we do, there's going to be a lot of hard things to face. Lots of problems to figure out. I'll wait. Right now. Just breathe. Tears reflected moonbeams when she tipped her head back. His heart clenched, like an icy fist grabbed him, ready to break in the face of her sorrow. A single tear jostled free. He reached up, swiped it away with the pad of a swollen thumb. Had he jammed it? Must have. So many, Merrick. So many gone. Yes. And you survived. Both of us did. And Papa. He almost said, and Lida, but didn't want to draw her mind back to Camille or Vivit. Not yet. He put a hand on her cheek, fingers on her cheekbone. She leaned closer. Her filthy hair swept her jaw and clipped, burned, and hacked strands around her jaw and ears. I need to take this out where I have jaw. <clears throat> her filthy hair swept her jaw and clipped, burned, and hacked strands around her ears. A frightful, lovely mess. All around them, Leadham Wood bloomed. Vines drew closer. Flowers dropped. Shuffling sounds slithered along the floor, as if roots reached for her. She steadied herself against the closest trunk. Cobalt streaks danced from her fingertips and up the wood, disappearing into the night. Vavit! She choked over the word. Vavit is gone. So is Camille. Oh, Camille! He gathered her in his arms. She trembled. The tears fell silently, ragged and powerfully taken. Their heat slipped down his neck. He held her all the tighter. The silent sobs continued until she whispered a quiet, Thank you. Bianca didn't back away. He didn't release her. Instead, they leaned against each other, limp. He counted her breaths against his chest, relished the feel of her in his arms, still alive. It had been selfish bringing her here. He wanted to hold her, reassure himself, bolster them for the inevitable that would follow. What felt like an eternity later, Bianca stiffened in his arms. She pulled away. Her anguish hardened like steel. She squared her shoulders. With a determined stare, she met his gaze. I'm ready. When this is over, B, we'll go to the south. We'll find Andre. He put a hand under her jaw. Avow it. We'll go together, get away from here, and make Vivit whole again. You promise? I promise. Remember my promise when getting through the next few days. It's going to be hard. You and me, in the forest, in the south, putting back together what you love so much. Hold on to it, B. I will, too. As if it were the missing piece, veracity returned. The remaining tears swept away. Fatigue and exhaustion shot through her bloodshot eyes. She needed a bath and an apothecary herself. All of that would happen. Then, they would be alone to wander the wilds. Together. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. We did it. All right, let me save this. Let me stop my screen. Let me unmute all of you. Wow, there's so much movement. <laughs> uh, now how do I do this? How do I unmute you all? Um, hold on. I don't, I, I don't, I wanna unmute all of you.
Oh, there you go. All of you unmute. I just asked you unmute. all to unmute. Hers Ben can go to bed. You guys, I'm coming out of my closet from Narnia. Just kidding. Okay, are you are you unmuting? Hold on, let me switch my audio. <gasps> That's not what I meant to do. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, you guys, my brain is not working. Can you guys hear me? Okay, but I can't hear any of you. Honey, you have to fix Zoom for me. <laughs> I can't hear anyone. Yeah, what? Yeah, sorry. I came out as soon as I could. Okay. Sorry, everyone. I'm trying to figure out how to hear you. Let me turn my Bluetooth off. <laughs> There we go. Found you. Now I can hear you all. Hi, everyone. You should have put Hello. the computer in his lap Hello. and told him, help me, so we could see him. He, he's Are you still <laughs> recording? He's, um, yes, let me turn off. Thank you. Dad, what would I do without you? <laughs>